Hello friends, it's so good to see you. I'm back on my Wednesdays and weekend video grind. Hold me to it. Uh, I haven't done a book haul since Christmas, so I have like 30 to 40 things that I have picked up in the last couple months, and I'm excited to share them with you. The good thing about this stack is it's a good amount of stuff I've already read, and then it's a good amount of stuff that has specific video plans along with them. I mean, there is maybe a third of this stack that I don't know when the heck I'm going to read, and maybe it'll sit on my TBR shelf for a year, but like, I guarantee a good amount of these books will be read promptly. Some of them you've already seen in my spring TBR. A lot of them you've seen on Instagram. So I don't know where to start. Oh, and please don't mind the chaos behind me. I've been doing a lot of video things and photo things and it is a mess back here, but I will fix it. If you see a weekend reading vlog from me soon, then within that is where I will fix all of this. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, two books that I bought recently are part of a series. This is Finley Donovan is Killing It and this is Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Casamano. And this is a silly, some people call it a cozy mystery series um, about this woman who's a writer and a mother and she accidentally gets caught up in this hit woman opportunity where people want her to kill someone. It's very fun. I've read this one. I can't wait to continue soon. Maybe I'll read it in that weekend reading vlog. That weekend reading vlog is not gonna be books that I pick. They're gonna be picked in a silly way. Can't guarantee what I'm gonna read. Okay, maybe since I talked about Finley Donovan, which I read for this video, I'll talk about the rest of the books that I read for that video. So if any of them sound intriguing based on the couple words that I say, you can go see my actual review. One of them is Come Closer by Sarah Grant, which is a possession story. Should I tell you my writings here? No, you can go watch my wrap up. <laughs> it's a very short horror about a woman just like losing, losing it. Then I've got To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini, which is about a woman in space losing it. No, she, oh God, I don't know the synopsis of this. Book calls her heart. Um, she's in space and she is on a mission and then she loses some people and she meets up with some other people and there's aliens and space wars and there's some really fascinating ideas about like mind control ship ship things why do i read sci-fi when i can't explain it uh legend born by tracy dion this is about a girl yeah it's about a girl she goes to this school new school program thing and uh finds this like secret society it's based on like the knights of the round table and she learns about uh like what really happened to her mother because her mother died and there's a magical it's her being introduced to magic and her importance in this magical system okay shouldn't read sci-fi and shouldn't read fantasy bad at describing things what can i describe can i describe this a history of wild places by shane Earn shay earnshaw is about this community called pastoral where the people in it aren't allowed to leave um, because there's this sickness and if you leave and you come back you can like pass around the sickness so they are uh, an enclosed like isolated community and they don't really know much outside of themselves they don't really think much is even out there until one day um, they start to question you know their leaders um, and what they're telling them and they they start to go outside a little bit now that wasn't a great description either um when you trap a tiger by tay keller is about a girl <laughs> her name is lily and she has a sick grandmother but she doesn't know that going into the book um so throughout it you're following along with this young woman who is getting more of a sense of like independence and finding herself while learning that her grandmother is sick and this is the last time that they really have together um so she connects with her via like storytelling there's this tiger and she tries to make a deal with this tiger um to save her grandmother it's really beautiful it's really sad it won the um newberry so you know it's sad i also read the Humans by Matt Haig, which is about an alien who takes over the body of this man and this alien race has decided that human beings shouldn't know this, like they shouldn't have all this knowledge um, 
this specific knowledge so this alien takes over this man's body and he is tasked with finding all of the people that this man knows whom he might have shared this greater knowledge with and along the way the alien like gets to know human beings better and like changes his expectations of people and something 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 i almost had that one is there anything else there probably is but this stack is confusing me um here's one that i picked up and i read it's called the order of the pure moon reflected in water by zen cho which is about a nun and there's this team of bandits that she meets and she wants to know more about like what they're doing what they're transporting and she inserts herself into this little gang and they travel and they're selling things and what else it's short you shouldn't know anymore i gave it four stars though i recommend it and then after i read that i was like i need to read something from that author that is longer and so i picked up Blackwater sister I need to take this sticker off and I don't know that I actually know what this is Jessamine starts hearing a voice in her head she chalks it up to stress closeted broke and jobless she's moving back to Malaysia with her parents but the new voice she learns isn't hers it's the ghost of her estranged grandmother and now she's drawn into the world of God's ghosts and family secrets story of retribution and control I'm excited to read it a couple books I was kindly sent We've got Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie, which is another one I hope to read in the next like week. So wish me luck with that. And this is about a girl in high school. I feel like I've talked about this so many times because it was in my most anticipated. I talked about it when the book was announced. I had it in my spring TVR and it's still just like a vague premise that I'm giving you because I don't even want to know too much. But we've got a girl who is questioning her sexual identity in high school, learning more about herself and like challenging the expectations she has on herself and that other people have of her. I think you'll see a review for this from me in my February wrap up and I will describe it more accurately then. Another one is Sorrowland by River Solomon which is so cool. This cover is stunning. I loved the deep. We're following a character named Vern who's pregnant and is being hunted in the forest. She goes through a metamorphosis and then has to face the past and the future outside the woods. I've heard it's incredible. I've had it recommended to me directly endlessly, so I need to read it. Ooh, and then I got The Inheritance of Orchidia Divina by Zorita Cordova. And I described this in my spring TBR, and then a couple people were like, mm, you kind of got it. But it's this woman, the matriarch of a family, um, and her family is coming back together to get their inheritance from her. But there's like a lot of other things happening along the way, like magic and death and i'm not gonna try to describe it again again hopefully i will read this in the next like two to three months and a proper review will be coming at you goodness the sun is really just having her moment today okay the next stack that seems right to go through is my rabbit collection now you might want to skip over this if you don't want to hear about all of these like again in the rabbit vlog but some of these are from different parts of the world so i wanted to make sure that i was ready come like july or august when i'm reading all of these if you're new here i love rabbits on covers and i've never given a book with a rabbit on the cover under five stars like they're all incredible and so the thing with this video is there's no way that that's going to be true by the end of it because I'm reading so many. So no matter what, by the end of it, that whole theory is going to be debunked. Um, but this started out as just being like, I wanted to pick up three to four titles. And then it's not that I just kept seeing them and picking them up. It's that I kept seeing them and actually being interested in the book itself and like would read it outside of this video. But now I suddenly have so many that it has to be a month long vlog. But these I will run through quickly because I'm gonna have to go through the synopsis of all of them in that video. Uh, we've got War Bunny by Christopher St. John. This is a fable. I think about an actual rabbit. They're not all actually about rabbits, but this one is a rebel rabbit turning the world of predators and prey on its head in this debut fantasy post-apocalyptic fable that's what's up with that one i picked up cursed bunny with all of these books i love you all so much um part of me hauling them is so like i don't get 50 messages a day with these books because i can't tell you it's hundreds it's hundreds it could be upwards of a thousand times that i have been messaged 
like these books collectively, which is so exciting. People see a bunny on the cover and they think of me and I think that's just a really beautiful legacy. But like, I hear you and I have it. Look at it. It's Cursed Bunny. It's by Bora Chung. This is definitely the one over the past year I have heard about the most. And it is genre defying short stories, horror, science fiction, surrealism, and it's about patriarchy and capitalism and I'm reading it. Hooray. Love a short story collection. I picked up this one on my own. It's called Thursday's Child. I just, I found it on a weird whim because I am Thursday's Child. I was born on a Thursday. You know, Thursday's Child has far to go. That's me. That's my identifier and I love it. And in this, are we also following an actual rabbit? Perhaps. It says her family's struggling to survive in a hot and impoverished land. Her brother escapes into a subterranean world of darkness and troubling secrets. Very excited for this. Next up is Hair House by Sally Hinchcliffe, which has also been sent to me a lot. Um, I ordered this from Book Depository. I don't think it's out in Canada yet. And also I didn't see it at all as a pre-order option on Indigo. So I just got it from Book Depository in case it couldn't come any other way. And this one is set in Scotland. We're following a woman who moves into an estate, hair house. There's a local tales of witchcraft. A heavy snowfall traps everyone inside. And it says it's a literary chiller, so. Okay. Next up, I have Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick, which I think came out a long time ago and had a couple different covers, and now it's been re-released like this. And this is just the right vibe. It's set in 2073 on a remote and secretive island. Rumor has it, no one ages and no children are born. Then there's some like royalty stuff, forbidden lovers. I I've only recently heard about it, but I'm down to give it a read. Next up, we have the one that has been recommended the most hundreds, hundreds of times, Terry Miles, Rabbits. It's the most clear, like if I missed this somehow, you guys, <laughs> apparently this is based on, like, I'm not very, I don't know, okay? But there's something to do with the podcast. No, I, I don't think I would ever listen to this. So I will be enjoying the book without like the context, but it's about some kind of game. It says it's an alternate reality game that started in 1959. 10 iterations have appeared, nine winners have been declared, the deeper you get the more dangerous the book becomes, and the 11th round is about to begin. That's all I know, that's all I want to know. I'm so intrigued and I'm so excited to have it. And then this one, Winterset Hollow. I love the vibes. Jonathan Edward Durham and this one I think was horror. It says it's a timeless tale about a tribe of animals preparing for their yearly end of summer festival. But after a series of shocking discoveries, they find that much of what the world believes to be fiction is actually fact. And the truth behind their beloved story is darker and more dangerous than they ever imagined. It's Barley Day and you're invited to the hunt. Thrilling and terrifying, complex, indelible, unforgettable climax that'll leave you reeling. I want to be reeling. Okay, that's all the rabbit books. Well, that's not all the rabbit books I have, but those are the ones that I've already shown you in other places. So I wanted to, you know, put them all together here. I do have a couple other ones of my sleeve and a few still to come. Moving on to a couple quick short story collections I picked up. I don't think I can sum them up because they're short story collections. So I'll just tell you, I have The Book of Magic. I love this series, this anthology series. Um, this one's edited by Gardner Dozois. All of them are. I don't know why I said this one. Uh, and then this one's called After Sundown, edited by Mark Morris. And these are horror short stories. These are like fantasy short stories about magic. I don't know when I'm gonna read them. I need to I need to do something about the anthologies. They keep stacking up and I've said like, I should read one a month. And then I didn't in January. And I don't know if I have time to in February. So I've just dropped the ball. Next up, let's briefly talk about the book club. This is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Uh, this is about two fathers and their sons were together and married, but they didn't completely support the relationship. Um, they were murdered. And I think this is like a slow mystery where these fathers come together and try to find out what happened to their sons. Um, I have started it. I'm reading it slowly throughout the month and I will announce the live show for this soon, I promise. Next up is a book I really wanted to pick for the book club, but it's so hard to find. 
and it's so much smaller than I thought it would be. I was hoping this would show up in the Goodreads Horror Awards last year, uh, the Choice Awards for the horror category. It didn't, um, but I really wanted to pick it up. It's called Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. And I don't think I remember, oh yeah, it's like um, this group of girls and they are kind of replicating the craft. Like they have their own magical circle called a seance and their laughter turns to terror when flames burn straight through their prayer candles. And I think one of them becomes possessed by a demon. That's gonna be fun. Okay, sticking with the horror vibes, I also have 12 Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Ocker. Though since hauling this in a video, a lot of people have told me that this isn't good. <laughs> So now I'm getting really worried, um, but it is a haunted house story. I think it's not like too scary and haunted, but it's about this man who goes to this house and stays there to be inspired for his novel. He brings his friend and it's like about facing horrors amongst your friendship. I also have this one though, Cherish Vera that was sent to me. I should have included this earlier. Sorry, my stack is a mess. Um, this is by Bethany C. Morrow. Oh, I actually bought another Bethany C. Morrow. This is the sequel to A Song Below Water, which is a book I loved about mermaids. I don't know that much about it, except we're following a different character who's in a loco, which is like another creature that can, like has a beautiful melody. But I love when authors write different age ranges, different genres, so I'm tr so intrigued by this one. And I think it's like a social horror. I've heard it's slow, um, has similar vibes to like Lakewood, at least in um, like pace and tone by Megan Giddings. And this is about a girl who moves in with her friend and like in that house, there's weird things going on. She wants to trust these people, but then suddenly she gets like a debilitating illness, upsetting fever dreams, and there's an ex inexplicable tension with some different like characters. And I think it's gonna be very interesting. And I hope to get to that by the end of the month again we'll see we'll see next one i think is another horror tell me i'm worthless by allison rumfit this is another haunted house one but i don't know like how haunted scary it is or more like social commentary it is perhaps the perfect mix because it's literally gothic about the modern day trans experience we had a character we had characters who were in this house and then one of the characters is still like stuck in that house years later don't know if it's like real or like their soul but I want to read it and then that's tell me I'm worthless and then I picked up tell me everything it's by Cambria Brockman I'm sure I read the synopsis but I don't remember oh it's about a murder at an elite New England college that does sound like something I would like because they're playing a dangerous game incredible is that all I read yeah I didn't even read any of this I saw I saw a game I saw Dangerous. I saw Elite College. It says it's about friendship, heartbreak, and betrayal. Yep, that's all I need to know. That's one of the ones that I don't know when I'm gonna get around to. I have no excuses for why I bought it. This one is How to Kill Your Best Friend by Lexi Elliott, which I do have a plan uh, for when this is gonna happen. And this is about some friends and one of their friends died supposedly drowned i feel like i pick this up a lot like somebody drowned but they were such a great swimmer that it doesn't seem possible or reasonable that that's what happened she owned this fancy resort with her husband and then her friends go to stay there after she died um to like celebrate her life and then they find out the truth of what really happened while they're there i think this will also be a book about betrayal friendship and heartbreak I'm just making that up. I don't know. Here's another book about friendship, betrayal, and heartbreak. Wahala by Nikki May. I've already read this. I love a toxic friendship. And this was like just enough like darkness that wasn't too ridiculous, but it was also like kind of fun and just like gossipy. So this is about a group of friends whose friend group is infiltrated by this new woman um, who just like wants to cause tension between the friends for no real reason besides her own entertainment and she does that and it's messy and it's a good time oh i found another horror sorry gnarled hollow by charlotte green this is another haunted house story that just arrived and this is a former estate we're following a character um who like loved an author and it's their estate she doesn't believe in the supernatural but once she goes to stay in this house 
she's joined by some other scholars and as they're doing their research mysterious frightening things start happening including a presence it appears to be a ghostly inhabitant and i think it's gonna be fun i hope it's gonna be fun i need good haunted house stories next up i think i left all these together because i don't really know what genre to put them in we've got did i already haul this maybe i already hauled this when life gives you mangoes by kareen getton well you know what you get to hear about it again or for the first time 12 year old clara lives on an island that visitors call exotic but there's nothing exotic about it to clara it's just home she loves eating ripe mangoes off the ground running in the rain with her papa and going to her secret hideout her best friend isn't really acting like a best friend these days and then a hurricane hits and clara's memory makes her forget everything that happened the last summer and then there's a new girl on the island it's a middle grade book i've had it recommended to me a ton and i picked it up either in the last two months or like six months ago and I just forgot that I already hauled it. My book hauls always get messy at some point, so welcome to that moment. Next up, I know I picked this up recently. It is Jonah's Gourd Vine by Zora Neale Hurston. I really just saw this for a couple dollars at the thrift store and I really enjoyed their eyes were watching God, so I just grabbed it. It is her first novel and it says it's about a young man who loves too many women for his own good. Even after becoming a pastor, he must confess that he is a natural man the rest of the week. It's a sympathetic portrait of a man and his community and talks about faith and tolerance and tension and spiritual spirituality. <laughs> you know all about spiritual spirituality. Okay, my battery's about to die. Uh, we've got Sharks in a Time of Saviors by Kawhi Strong Washburn, which again I talked about in my spring TBR because I'm very intrigued by this. I had this directly recommended to me and it's about this child who falls overboard in a boat and gets taken back to the boat via a shark and then there's some type of magical thing going on with his family when his family has a reunion. And then I picked up two Toni Morrison's. This one was from the thrift store. This one wasn't. <laughs> This is Recitative, which is a short story. Um, again, going to try to read it by the end of the month. And it is about two women. One of them is black, one of them is white, but we don't get to know their race throughout the story, even though race plays a really big importance in the story and their identities. That's all I've heard about it. I'm just, I'm intrigued to see what it is. And then I grabbed The Bluest Eye. I've read two Toni Morrison's and didn't love either of them. So I'm just... I'm picking up some other things because I think there's obviously potential here. Um, obviously, Toni Morrison is a beloved author. Um, this is about a young black girl praying every day for beauty, mocked by other children for her dark skin, curly hair, and brown eyes. It's a brilliant examination of our obsession with beauty and conformity. And then lastly, I have a nonfiction called Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. This is a memoir about just a woman's entire life um in her childhood her father was incarcerated and we she learns more about like what actually happened and the truth about that experience from people throughout her life it also covers her experiencing assault and different relationships she's been through her relationship with her body and i'm just interested to read a memoir that i've heard people speak very highly of um and that's it those are all the books I think like I'm, I'm usually probably missing some things and obviously like I said included things that I've hauled before but thank you very much for watching I hope you heard about something that you're interested in or you want to share your thoughts on something down below something here you think I will really like and you want to let me know about that down below and I'll chat with you in the comments bye